Panasonic's cameras have always been popular with video shooters and vloggers, but one thing has held them back from true greatness, the lack of a phase detect autofocus system. But now Panasonic has finally fixed that problem with the launch of the S5 II. That should eliminate a lot of the wobbles and hunting that have plagued Panasonic mirrorless cameras for a long time now. That's not the only feature introduced for content creators though. Panasonic has also brought over its stabilization system from the GH6. The S52 is also attractively priced at $2,000, which is $500 less than its main competition, Canon's EOS R6 Mark II and Sony's A7 IV. Since this is Panasonic's first crack at a phase detect autofocus system, I was of course very curious to see how it stacked up against those cameras. To find out, I took it around the sites of my hometown in Gien, France. The S52's body and control layout is identical to the S5 and that's generally a good thing. At 740 grams, it's still a reasonably lightweight video camera that's comfortable enough to shoot for a full day. It has a big comfortable grip along with lots of manual controls that let you change settings without the need to dip into menus. It has all the controls you'd hope for like a joystick, dedicated AF and more. The record button is placed on top so it's easy to find when vlogging, but it would be nice to have a second one on the front like the GH6. The 3 inch fully articulating rear display is awesome for vlogging and unchanged from before. However, Panasonic boosted the EVF resolution to 3.68 million dots, addressing one of my biggest complaints with the last model. Another welcome update is UHS-2 memory cards in both slots rather than just one like before, providing faster transfer speeds and more reliable backups. It also now uses a full size rather than a flimsy micro HDMI jack like before, making it far more reliable when using an external recorder. There are of course headphone and mic jacks, but the S52 now offers four channel recording via a hot shoe audio adapter just like the GH6. It also borrows the latter's audio interface that gives you a central hub for all audio settings. Finally, the batteries are borrowed from the S52 and deliver up to 470 shots on a charge or a solid two hours of 4K video recording. Photography isn't the key target market for this camera, so let's get straight into video. The centerpiece is the new Phase Detect Autofocus, designed to eliminate the wobble inherent in its past Contrast Detect AF systems. So how does it work? The S52 systems includes regular continuous AF modes along with subject tracking for both humans and animals. Unlike the A7 IV and EOS R6 II though, it doesn't include things like cars and airplanes or distinguish between birds and other animals. Luckily, the capabilities it does have are on par with those models. It smoothly tracks subjects and has very little lag if they move toward the camera for example. Face and eye detection are good, though it struggles a bit if the subject turns or is far from the camera. It's also not quite as sticky as rival models. Still, it tracks focus reliably and the pulsing, hunting, wobbling autofocus of past models is completely gone. So you can now rely on the S52's AF in most situations. With that restriction finally gone, the S52 has a lot of other powerful features that make it a far more attractive vlogging and video camera. You can shoot 5.9K video at 30p using the full width of the sensor or full width super sampled 4K at up to 30 frames per second. 60p 4K video requires an APS-C crop though with some loss of sharpness. It can handle 4x3 anamorphic video at up to 6K using the full sensor width or 3x2 open gate video that makes it easier to crop or deliver in social media formats. There are very few temperature related time restrictions in any of these modes thanks to the inclusion of a clever fan that only kicks in when you need it. As you'd expect with Panasonic, you can shoot 10-bit video with V-Log to boost dynamic range and it's easier than ever to monitor that V-Log. You can not only choose a standard Rec.709 output, but display your own custom-made lookup tables or LUTs too. You can even record those LUTs in your final video output, potentially saving time in post. 
The main video drawback is lowish data rates and the lack of any internal recording modes that are easy to edit. There's also no external raw capture, though you'll eventually be able to add that later for a $200 fee once Panasonic releases a firmware update. And that brings up Panasonic's upcoming S52X, announced at the same time as the S52. It's priced at $2,200 and is mostly identical. But that extra $200 gets you not only raw external video, but also ProRes capture to an external SSD via the USB-C port. With a small price difference to get such a useful feature, a lot of people might want to wait for this model. Another terrific new capability is the updated in-body stabilization borrowed from the GH6. It's now much better at smoothing out vertical step motion than the S5, though there's still some side-to-side -side sway. It also has a feature called Boost IS for handheld video with no movement, keeping shots locked off like you're shooting from a tripod. Video quality is excellent with colors that are accurate and pleasing straight out of the camera with natural looking flesh tones. The 10-bit V-Log video offers excellent dynamic range, just slightly below Nikon and Sony models, so you have plenty of room for creativity or fixing over and underexposed shots. The S52 is also good in low light. Don't expect Sony AS7 III level performance, but the dual ISO system really keeps noise down at ISOs even as high as 12,800 or 25,600. You'll of course see noise when you boost the shadows at those ISOs, but it looks quite natural. Anything below ISO 6400 has very little visible noise. As for rolling shutter, the S52 is middling in this regard. It's most noticeable in 6K or super sampled 4K modes, but not bad at all with an APS-C crop. Finally, Panasonic offers a lot of ways to monitor video not seen on rival cameras, including waveforms and vector scopes. Those features are very useful to video pros, helping them nail exposure and color accuracy. Most people likely won't buy the S52 for photography, but it's not bad at all in this area. It can handle bursts at up to 7 frames per second with a mechanical shutter, or 30 frames per second in electronic mode. The buffer is quite impressive as it allows for 200 shots in raw mode before throttling, a full 6 seconds of uninterrupted 30 frames per second burst shooting. At those speeds, the autofocus largely keeps up, though it's not quite as fast or accurate as the R6 II and A7 IV AF systems. Still, it's much better than the Contrast Detect AF of the last model, and up there with recent Nikon and Fujifilm AF systems. Despite the fast electronic burst speeds, the S52 has limited utility as a sports camera. The rolling shutter would impact shots with fast-moving subjects unless you use it in APS-C mode. Given how well it handles video, photos are a piece of cake for the image stabilization system. It locks things down so well that I was able to shoot down to a quarter second or even less and still get a sharp image. Despite the shift to a sensor with phase detect pixels, image quality hasn't suffered with dynamic range just slightly below Sony and Nikon models. The S52 delivers great photos with natural looking colors and skin tones. It also shines in low light situations thanks to the stabilization, dual ISO system and relatively large pixels. With the autofocus now working great, Panasonic's S52 is a formidable full frame vlogging and video camera. It not only has a powerful set of features, but is substantially cheaper than most of its rivals. Its primary competitors are the Sony a7 IV and Canon EOS R6 II. Both of those cameras are superior for photography, but the S52 is much better for video and particularly vlogging, thanks to the built-in monitoring tools, high-quality 10-bit output, and superior stabilization. In fact, its greatest rival might be its own upcoming S52X. I'd argue that many people paying $2,000 wouldn't hesitate to spend another $200 to get some pretty valuable features. Either way, Panasonic's S52 is once again a go-to camera for vloggers, just like the original GH5. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. And for more on technology, check out Engadget.com.